Traveling with a full-size guitar can be difficult to say the least, but you're in luck because there are a plethora of travel guitars out there. And today I'm gonna to share with you my five favorite travel guitars under $500. Hey TAC family and welcome to Acoustic Tuesday episode number 160. The Acoustic Tuesday show is designed to bring fun, focus, and progress to your guitar journey through my weekly Guitar Geek list and of course meeting your fellow TAC members. In fact today you're going to meet fellow Guitar Geek Michael G who upon reflecting on his guitar journey realized that he had a major win that he needed to share. We'll get to Michael G's story in a minute but first let's dig into my five favorite travel guitars under $500. Now, travel guitars are interesting because I feel like every company under the sun offers a travel guitar, and I've had the chance to play a ton of them, which is why I thought this list was in order. With the holidays around the corner and travel maybe in your future, I thought now's the time to share my five favorites in a pretty friendly price point, under $500. So let's dig into the list. The first travel guitar on that list comes in at $99. It is made by Yamaha and it is called the Gitalele, the Yamaha GL1 Gitalele. It's not a guitar, it's not a ukulele, it's a Gitalele. It's actually a really great travel instrument because it is so small and so condensed. It's essentially like taking your standard size guitar but capoing it at the fifth fret. So the scale length is a mere 17 inches. It comes with a little bag. It's super sturdy, easy to play. It has nylon strings, so it's pretty easy on the fingers. And ultimately, it's a pretty darn good travel companion. Let's go ahead and give it a listen. The next guitar on my list is actually two guitars. I couldn't make a decision between these two models, so I decided I'm making the rules here. I'm gonna throw them both on the list. One's made by Taylor, one is made by Martin. They both have solid tops and they're both incredible instruments. First, we have the Taylor BT-1, also known as the Baby Taylor, and of course, the Martin LX-1. These guitars are a travel-friendly size. They pack a good sonic punch. Given the size of the instrument, they come with a gig bag, and ultimately, it's really nice to have an instrument like this on your travels because they're close to a full-size guitar, so you still get the feeling of playing a full-size guitar, but you get the smaller condensed package of a travel instrument. Now, long ago, I'm talking lifetimes ago, I had a chance to put these two models head-to-head, -head, the BT-1 versus the LX-1, and I don't think I made a decision after that comparison either. Nonetheless, let's have a look at the footage so you can see a much younger Tony and, of course, hear these models. price on both the Taylor and the Martin models. The Taylor BT-1, the baby Taylor, comes in at $369, and the Martin LX-1 comes in at $349, at least at the time of this filming. So a really great travel instrument at a super awesome price, right around $350. Now, if you like those guitars, but you're thinking, gosh, you know, Tom, those are travel instruments, yes, but they're still a little too big for my liking. I don't know if they'll be convenient enough for me. Let me introduce you to the next guitar on my list, and that is the Journey Puddle Jumper. Yes, this guitar packs a potent tonal punch in a very small package, but it can be a little deceiving because this guitar, well, it's pretty tiny when it's fully deployed, however, the neck comes off of this instrument and stows away in a wonderful little bag that is easy to just throw on your back. So essentially this guitar is just as big as its body and that is not very big at all. It does have a solid spruce top, layered mahogany back and sides, and with the function of the neck coming off, this instrument makes travel a breeze. I mean, Journey Instruments knocked it out of the park. I played their uh, first class overhead parlor some time ago, about two years ago, I believe. I traveled with that to Chicago, and that was easy to travel with, but it was actually quite a bit bigger than this instrument. So I can't imagine how easy it is to travel with this little puddle jumper. Now, 
It's cool looking, and of course it functions great, but how does it sound? Well, let's give it a listen. Okay, I've got two more guitars left on my list. One from Martin, one from Taylor. They're both stellar instruments. They both come in at the same exact price. So it's tough to say which one wins out, but I have to say I saved my personal best for last. So let me get into the next guitar on my list, and that is the Martin Dreadnought Jr. This guitar comes in at $4.99, and I have to say, if you're looking for a guitar that can hold its own amongst other instruments, if you're looking for a guitar that is smaller in size but still offers a wonderful bass response, like a guitar that you can strum and has a little bit of meat and body to, the Martin Dreadnought Jr. is the instrument for you. You can travel with it. It comes with a great gig bag. It has a solid spruce top. I believe there are two models, one with a solid Sapelli top, one with a solid spruce top. Nonetheless, the guitar is comfortable to play. It is roadworthy and it sounds pretty darn awesome. Let's go ahead and give it a listen. <laughs> Now, as you may have guessed, I saved my absolute favorite travel guitar for last. Yes, the Taylor GS Mini, specifically the Taylor GS Mini Mahogany. This model comes in at $4.99, and I believe they are still making it. If they're not, it's okay. There still seem to be plenty available online, but this guitar, to me, has it all. I think Taylor hit a home run with this model between the guitar offering articulation, balance, warmth, volume, projection, and all in an easy to travel with, comfortable size, a, a comfy scale length, a comfy body shape. It comes with a hard gig bag, which is fantastic if you're throwing it on an airplane in the overhead compartments. This guitar is a great travel companion, and I have to say, it is my absolute favorite. I had to save the best for last. Now, there is a little bit of a caveat, but we do have to listen to the instrument first. And in fact, when the Taylor GS Mini Mahogany first came out, I was actually at Taylor, so I had a chance to play this model in my hotel room, as you'll see in this clip. Yes, that footage was shot pretty much a lifetime ago, as you can tell by the length of my hair. Now onto the disclaimer. The Taylor GS Mini Mahogany model is the only GS Mini model that is under $500. The GS Mini Mahogany comes in at $499, whereas the standard uh, Sitka Spruce Top layered mahogany back and sides, the Sitka Spruce Top uh, layered rosewood back and sides, and the Alcoa model all are above $500. Yes, it's a little bit of a technicality and I didn't want to mislead anyone or send anyone on a wild goose chase, but I did want to include my favorite travel guitar of all time and it is the Taylor GS Mini. So a little bit of an asterisk next to that, but I think you get the drift. Uh, it's a great guitar and one that I've really had fantastic experiences with. Now, that being the topic of discussion today, travel guitars, uh, let me go ahead and ask you, what is your favorite travel guitar under $500? Let me know in the comments below. I'm kind of curious what I missed on my list. Now, as you're doing that, let me share with you a couple of the perks that I think travel guitars offer. Because yes, they make travel easy, but they offer some side perks that might not be always top of mind. And when you're looking for excuses to buy another guitar, not that you need another excuse, but some of this may help your cause. Number one, travel guitars allow you to keep up your daily playing routine simply because, well, you can travel with the guitar. 
Number two, travel guitars make great couch guitars. They're smaller in size, they have a shorter scale length, and ultimately they're super comfortable to play, and you can just cozy up on the couch with one of those bad boys and play for a good long time. So it, again, promotes your playing habit. The third thing is that travel guitars build relationships. How often have you been at an airport, at a rest stop, uh, I don't know, maybe a bus station, I don't know, but seen somebody with a guitar case and it has spurred on a discussion. Yes, travel guitars can actually help you meet people because guitar geeks, well, we're like birds of a feather. We flock together. And when we see somebody with a guitar case, we have to know their story, when they started playing, how long they've played, what they like to play, what got them into the guitar in the first place. So yes, travel guitars can actually start relationships. And the last and final reason, and one that is, well, fairly timely because of the holidays, is that travel guitars make great student instruments, especially for younger learners, kids with smaller hands. I'm talking like anywhere from six to 15 years old where, you know, they might be, the kid might be of the size where they can't really handle a full size instrument, but they want the performance of a nice instrument. Well, enter the travel guitar. You get a smaller instrument, you get a smaller scale length in a more manageable size and you still get really good tone. So I think travel instruments make great student instruments specifically for kids. So there you have it. Just a couple of reasons why, a couple under the radar reasons why travel guitars are well, well beyond just for travel purposes. Now I wanna introduce you to Tony's Acoustic Challenge member, Michael G. Michael G just celebrated his very first anniversary, and he has an awesome story to tell. Now we'll get to his story in a moment, but I do wanna let you know that right before I wrap up the show today, I've got a couple of really cool news headlines, some things you should know about, and Whitney and I had a home intruder last week, and I wanna share that with you for the benefit of the Guitar Geek community. But we'll get to those news updates here in a little bit. Let's dig into Michael G's story. Now, as I mentioned, Michael G just celebrated his first anniversary, and it was actually back in May. Here's what he had to say. My one year anniversary was back in May. I wasn't gonna submit a anniversary because I didn't think I had anything special to say. But a few weeks ago, I had a big win that reminded me of one of the main reasons I joined TAC in the first place. And this is so cool because we're gonna actually start, at, well, we're gonna start at the start, a logical place, uh, where Michael G began and kind of get into his head where he was at when he first picked up the guitar, why he wanted to pick up the guitar, and then we'll get to his big win, which I think, will, I think you'll find inspiring for your own guitar journey. So here's what Michael G had to say about where he started with guitar. I knew some chords, some songs, if I could remember from my youthful rock and roll metal days, but I never learned how to play. I had an acoustic guitar and wanted to play some 80s ballad songs. I wanted to be the guy that always showed up with a guitar in his hand. More importantly, I wanted to play guitar with my dad and brother. And now let's go ahead and dig into his progress. You know, this is so cool. Uh, before we actually get to the progress, you know, kind of creating a baseline and, and, and being in, in Michael's shoes where he started is so important because I think we can all relate. You know, we start the guitar for some reason. Maybe it's we wanna be at the, uh, the guy at the party with the guitar. Maybe we simply want to just play because, well, it feels good and we wanna know that one song that will maybe impress that one person. But a lot of times there's, uh, well, there's a little bit deeper, there's a deeper motive behind why we wanna learn guitar. Now let's uh, give an update on Michael's progress. Uh, fretboard Wizard, the Tony's Acoustic Challenge program Fretboard Wizard, has opened my eyes. I see the fretboard in a new refreshing way. I understand chord progressions so much better now. I have learned many bar chords that I thought I would never be able to do, and I find that now my practice routine is so spot on that I almost never have a bad guitar day anymore. That is a major win and one that is very much worth celebrating, so I appreciate you sharing that, Michael. He also says, I have a lot of fun at every practice. Oh. And a few weeks ago, now check this out, this is huge. The family got together to celebrate my dad's 80th birthday. We all played guitar and sang to him and afterwards just hung out and enjoyed each other's company with strumming guitars in hand. It was the best. Now, I have to say that is so cool. In fact, I'm getting goosebumps just reading it. Uh, so congratulations, Michael, on your one-year anniversary, And more importantly, congratulations on fulfilling a dream. One of the initial dreams that got you into guitar in the first place. In fact, I would venture to go out on a limb and say this. 
If you didn't have a solid guitar routine, if you weren't having fun every day, that dream may have never happened. But you have a solid routine. You're having fun every day. You said it right here. You know, I never have a bad guitar day anymore. And to me, that all adds up and, and, and kind of creates this equation to where your guitar dream scene can come true. So congratulations, Michael. What an awesome story. And thank you so much for sharing that. Now, since we're almost ready to wrap up the show, I want to go into a couple of guitar signals and some news updates that I think you'll find pretty interesting. Okay, first up, let's go ahead and dive into some guitar signals. Now, I did have a little bit of a theme here. Since we're talking about travel guitars today, I thought I'm gonna pick some guitar signals that aren't from the US. So we've got one from London and one from Canada. Let, I almost said Canada, that would have been, that would have been horrible. That would have been really bad. <laughs> Let's go ahead and start in London. This guitar signal comes from Beatrice D. And here we have the guitars from left to right. We have a Hokata Dreadnought made in Japan. That's roughly around 40 years old. We have a Faith Venus in Blood Moon Burst finish with this tone wood. Check this out. It's made with solid figured Indonesian Trembesi. Hopefully I said all of that right, but a tone wood I certainly want to uh, examine maybe a little bit more closely. It sounds interesting to me. Uh, next we have a Schecter Blackhawk electric guitar that was rescued from a charity shop three years ago. And in her hands is a parlor body from Art and Luthery, the roadhouse in Tennessee red. I was lucky to have spotted this lovely secondhand, well looked after new addition to the family. I love the woody tones and it smells lovely too. Solid spruce top and wild cherry back and sides. So cool, and you definitely know you're a guitar geek when you smell guitars, because, I don't know, I think guitars smell pretty good too. My Martin HD35 has Spanish cedar uh, kerfing. I'm sorry, it's got a Spanish cedar neck. I forget what the kerfing is, but anyways, the inside of the guitar smells, well, just quite delicious. So I am I am tracking with you, Beatrice, and I'm sure uh, all of us guitar geeks are tracking along with you as well. Uh, our next guitar signal comes from Vancouver, British Columbia, up in Canada, not Canada, for those of you taking notes. Uh, and it comes from Rich L and he says this, hi Tony, thanks to hi Tony, thanks to you and everyone else for the info, reviews, and general good vibes in regards to all things guitar. As a fellow lover of skulls and all things guitar, once my shirt arrived, I had to put it on and share it with you guys. From left to right, we have himself, Rich L, uh, Siegel Artist Concert Hall, a 1966 Vox Mark VI, an Epiphone Les Paul Studio, a Gretsch Bobtail Resonator, a Simon & Patrick Roadhouse, a Martin GPC 13E, a 1999 Siegel S6 GT, and also included in the foreground are three members of my Skull Collection. I've named them Manny, Moe, and Jack. Thanks for all the work and love you put into the show. It is greatly appreciated up here in the Great White North. Well, thank you so much, Rich, for sharing your guitar signal and sharing the good vibes from the Great White North. And again, thank you, Beatrice, for sharing your guitar signal as well. Now, if you're sitting there thinking, hey, I have a guitar signal that I want to share, please do it. I would love to feature your guitar signal on the Acoustic Tuesday show. Just head over to AcousticTuesday.store, pick out your favorite guitar signal shirt, and get it shipped directly to your door. Note, there are three new guitar signal designs, so you got quite a few to pick from. Once that shirt arrives, take a picture of it take a picture of yourself in that shirt amongst all of your guitars and then submit it at acousticlife.tv. Go ahead and click on the submit link in the upper menu. And once you do that, you can upload your picture and share your story just like Beatrice and Rich did. Okay, a couple of Guitar Geek news headlines before I officially wrap up the show. The first one involves a home intruder that Whitney and I experienced last week. And I was up, I can't remember what day it was. I wanna say it was Wednesday night. And I was up feeding Emerson. It was right around midnight and I heard this noise outside and I thought for sure someone was breaking in. And then Coda, the big white dog, he starts barking. Whitney wakes up and she said, I'm a little nervous. He's acting weird, the dog. And she said, can you go check out the basement? So I did, checked out the studio, checked out all the rooms, the closets, security systems on, no issues there. Uh, came upstairs and I thought, I, I guess it was just a fluke. I guess something, you know, might have knocked against the, the house. So I try and go back and feed Emerson. And then Coda, the big white dog, he starts barking again. Again, acting super strange. And Whitney's way freaked out at this point in time. So she goes to the back porch, flips on the back light and sees this. Oh my God, dude, look at this. He's ripping the whole thing down. Holy. 
Yes, it was a bear on our back porch who was hungry and looking for a snack in our bird feeders. Something that wasn't even on my radar, but well, I guess welcome to Montana, ladies and gentlemen. A fun little tidbit of news from the home front that I wanted to share with you. Now, I do have some true guitar related news that I should uh, dig into right here. And the first one comes in the form of a song that was arranged for the acoustic guitar that I don't think ever even was written for the acoustic guitar, and it comes courtesy of Mike Dawes. Mike Dawes arranged the Van Halen tune Jump in an expert fashion, and let's just listen to a quick little snip of it right now. truly captivating arrangement and one that I would encourage you to watch all the way through. In fact, head on over to Mike Dawes' YouTube channel. You'll be able to see the full arrangement there. And what really struck me more than the, well, maybe not more than the playing, but on the same level of the playing is what inspired him to actually sit down and arrange this tune. Let me go ahead and read what he posted on YouTube. When I was 14, I heard Eddie Van Halen play for the first time, and his playing changed my world, from transcribing his iconic Beat It solo at school to attempting his signature techniques on the acoustic guitar. I hadn't played guitar for two months due to 2020, but, ap but upon hearing the shocking news of Eddie's passing, the impulse to pick up the guitar again came pouring out. There was a great video of Ed going around telling a young fan to play music. Just play music, man. I stayed up until 6 a.m. that night just playing. This is made with 100% love and sincerity. It's a free download with no monetization or ads on the video, unless the Van Halen publisher wants them. I wanted to create a tribute in honor to of a legend that inspired so many players out there, and I hope I've done it justice. Maybe it will inspire you to play too. Rest in peace, EVH. Such a, a, a touching tribute right there, and one that I thought was interesting on so many levels. I mean, we all draw inspiration from various uh, players and songs and things like that, but what really struck me was I hadn't played guitar for two months due to 2020. You know, there's a lot of cr crazy things happening right now, and when I hear that from a player that I greatly admire, it makes me feel like, oh, yeah, that's right, we, we are all human again. Um, we always have been all human. Uh, just so cool to hear that, you know, even, even players that are top notch sometimes struggle to pick up the guitar. And uh, this inspired him and man, the, the results are really stunning. So thanks Mike Dawes for creating such a beautiful, beautiful arrangement. The next piece of news I have for you, now this is where the thread starts, by the way, so start taking notes. The next piece of news I have for you is Mandolin Orange, fantastic, fantastic duo, just put out a new single uh, entitled My Brother, My Keeper. Let's go ahead and give it a listen right now. My brother, my my brother, my friend, what an end, what an end. So stoked to see new music from these two. I uh, really love Mandolin Orange, and I have to say that I have been absolutely wearing this single out. You know, when you listen to things on Spotify or you digitally stream it, you can hit the repeat button and it just flashes the little one and you can listen to the same song over and over and over again. I've been doing that very thing with this very song and it's it's awesome. So if you dig Mandolin Orange, if you're just looking for a good acoustic duo song that kind of seems to fit the mood, uh, that's it. They nailed it. And uh, what, a, what a great piece of music. So thanks, Mandolin Orange, for putting out fantastic music. And that brings me to the next news headline I have for you, which is related. So again, take notes. I want to let you know about the Sad Songs Quarantine Hour that the Milk Carton Kids are putting out. Currently, they're on episode number 17, 18. They're on episode number 18. And how does this relate to Mandolin Orange? Well, Mandolin Orange was a guest on this show. The way the format of the show works is that they do an interview portion with an artist that they like, the Milk Carton Kids interview an artist that they like. And then at the end, they cap it off with a song played together and it's truly stunning. There's two standout performances, in my opinion, uh, the first of which is uh, with Jessica Hoop. So it's the Milk Carton Kids singing alongside Jessica Hoop. It's beautiful, and here's a quick little snippet of it. I can see the North Star I can see the North Star 
And because it relates to the previous news topic, uh, Mandolin Orange was indeed a guest, so let's listen to the song that they did together. This should have been different. Could have been easy. Pride has a way. Going to firm. There's a history. And then it burns like wildfire. Huge tip of the hat to the Mill Carton kids for putting on an entertaining show, including some stellar music, and spreading the word about the Save Our Stages initiative. In fact, all the Sad Songs Quarantine Hour shows point to the Save Our Stages initiative, which was uh, started by the National Independent Venue Association. Uh, independent venues have been hit really hard by the COVID-19 situation. In fact, nearly all of them haven't really been able to do their day-to-day. -day. So this having this show spread the word about the initiative and helping really to raise funds for these venues that really helped shape the careers for so many artists like the Milk Carton Kids and the artists that they feature on their show uh, is really, really cool. So uh, you can learn more about that at SaveOurStages.com or you can visit the Sad Songs Quarantine Hour uh, episodes at, ironically, SadSongsComedyHour.com. Uh, so make sure to check both of those out. Now, I have one final piece of news for you. It is a sad piece of news, but it does have a happy ending. Did you follow the thread so far? So we started off the thread with Mandolin Orange releasing a new song. Mandolin Orange was then a guest on the Milk Carton Kids' Sad Songs Quarantine Hour, and then Sad Songs, well, they're sad songs because they're sad, and this last piece of news is sad, so I, I feel like I really hit the trifecta here. Uh, this is a story about a Scotland busker, Matt Grant, who had this happen to him. This lady has come over and she just smashed my guitar. And uh, that's a 300 pound guitar. I was totally gutted. I was, um, I was trying to hold back, you know, just how terrible I felt because I was thinking, I don't want people to see me, you know, in, in tears right now, you know, right, right on the streets, but that's my livelihood. Pretty tragic for any guitar geek to see that. Seriously, to have your guitar smashed, not cool. Uh, but Jack White of the White Stripes and Third Man Records, amongst many other musical projects, caught wind of this story and did this. Jack's manager basically said that he was trying to track him down and had uh, thought the easiest way to do that is to phone around the guitar shops in, in Edinburgh. Um, so he'd, he'd, phoned, he'd phoned Guitar Guitar and uh, said, listen, if Matt comes in, can you pass on my number? So lo and behold, half an hour later, the door opens and in comes Matt. And then while I was just testing out some of the guitars while I was getting mine set up, I get the phone passed to me and, and uh, next thing I know, um, I get someone saying, oh, hello Matt, um, I'm Jack White's manager. Uh, Jack's seen your story and he wants to buy a new guitar. <laughs> I went, oh man, that's awesome, but I've just bought one. And he went, well, um, buy another. Jack White's, you know, Jack White wants to buy you a guitar, man. Just go and pick a guitar up. A pretty awesome story with a not so great beginning, but a fantastic ending, serious guitar gratitude, and what a, what a cool kind of full circle moment where musicians can kind of band together and in an unexpected way. Could you imagine walking into a guitar store that you frequent and the, the shop keep says, hey, uh, yeah, Jack White just called, go ahead and pick out a guitar, anyone you want. It's on him today because somebody smashed your guitar. Uh, pretty darn cool and a story that I thought you would find very interesting. All right, I am ready to wrap up the show officially. Let's take a quick sneak peek into next week on the Acoustic Tuesday show. Next week on the Acoustic Tuesday show, we're going to focus on the Guitars for Vets organization. Since tomorrow is indeed Veterans Day, I wanted next week's show to be dedicated to Guitars for Vets, uh, their program, how it's changing lives, and what you can do to help. So that's all going to happen next week on the Acoustic Tuesday show. I want to thank you so much for joining me today. I want to thank you so much for being a guitar geek. And remember, your guitar progress, however you define it, is only as good as your guitar routine. So instead of focusing on mastering the guitar, spend your time mastering your guitar routine. It will pay off big time. Until next week, again, thank you so much for joining me. Remember, you can catch the Acoustic Tuesday show every single Tuesday at 10 a.m. Mountain Time here on YouTube. And of course, for your Acoustic Tuesday fix in between Tuesdays, please visit AcousticLife.tv. Until next week, have a fantastic guitar-infused week, and remember, guitar geeks unite. Cheers. Okay.